November 9, 2015 Feast of the Dedication of the Lateran Basilica A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel The angel brought me back to the entrance of the temple, and I saw water flowing out from beneath the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the facade of the temple was toward the east. The water flowed down from the southern side of the temple, south of the altar. He led me outside by the north gate, and round to the outer gate facing the east, where I saw water trickling from the southern side. He said to me, This water flows into the eastern district, down upon the Arabah, and empties into the sea the salt waters, which it makes fresh. Wherever the river flows, every sort of living creature that can multiply shall live, and there shall be abundant fish. For wherever this water comes, the sea shall be made fresh. Along both banks of the river, fruit trees of every kind shall grow. Their leaves shall not fade, nor their fruit fail. Every month they shall bear fresh fruit, where they shall be watered by the flow from the sanctuary. Their fruit shall serve for food, and their leaves for medicine. The Word of the Lord. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy of the Most High. God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in distress. Therefore we fear not, though the earth be shaken and mountains plunge into the depths of the sea. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. There is a stream whose runlets gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is in its midst, it shall not be disturbed. God will help it at the break of dawn. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. The Lord of hosts is with us, our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Come, behold the deeds of the Lord the astounding things he has wrought on earth. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, you are God's building. According to the grace of God given to me, like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation, 
and another is building upon it. But each one must be careful how he builds upon it, for no one can lay a foundation other than the one that is there, namely Jesus Christ. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person, for the temple of God which you are is holy. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, Take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of Scripture, Zeal for your house will consume me. At this the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for forty-six years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. November 9th, the dedication of the Lateran Basilica in Rome. The first reading comes from the book of the prophet Ezekiel 47, 1-2, 8-9, and 12. This is a vision that Ezekiel has while he's in Babylon of the temple in Jerusalem. Remember, at the time he's having this vision, the temple doesn't even exist. It was destroyed by the Babylonians. Nevertheless, he has a vision of that temple which would be rebuilt in the future. And he sees water coming out of the temple. This water we could call grace, we could call the Holy Spirit. It's the gift of God's love which flows out of the temple. The liturgy brings life to the nation. And in fact, this river fertilizes the land, becomes so deep that he can't even pass through it. So it's the abundance of grace that God showers upon us through the liturgy. Sometimes when we're sitting in chapel, praying in front of the Eucharist, sometimes when we're standing and celebrating Eucharist with others, we say, what good is this doing? But we have to realize that there's a spiritual good, there's a spiritual energy that's produced simply by our being there. Even though we can't measure it, can't see it, it's there. We had a man stop by our friary one day, and he said, Friars, you don't know me, but I passed in front of your friary every day for 37 years, when I went to work and when I came home. And I found such peace because I knew you friars were at peace. He had never talked to us in 37 years, but he sensed something of the goodness that was occurring inside the friary. Likewise, When we pray in church, something passes beyond that church into the world. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians 3, 9-11, 16-17. Here we hear about the church not as a church building, but rather as the community, as the people of God. Paul has laid the foundation, but we are the very temple of God. So we no longer have to go to a place. Already inside of our hearts we encounter God. It doesn't mean that the liturgy is wrong. It simply means that it isn't the only place where we meet God. The Gospel is from John 2, 13-22. In this passage we hear about how Jesus cleanses the temple of those who are changing money, those who are selling animals. Now realize, it was essential to change money because people would arrive with pagan coins. They couldn't offer them because they had the pictures of pagan gods pagan emperors, so that would be sacrilegious to offer that in the temple. Nevertheless, in spite of the fact that this is needed, 
It's become a marketplace where people have abused this. Likewise, the selling of animals. People couldn't come from Greece and bring a sheep to offer, so they would buy it when they arrived in Jerusalem. That was needed. But the way they're being sold has made this into a marketplace. And so the people say that zeal for your house consumed me. That zeal for the house of the Father consumed Jesus. Now it's interesting, this is chapter 2 of John. In the Synoptic Gospels, Jesus doesn't cleanse the temple until just before the Passion. And this is a subtle message in John. If Jesus cleanses the temple in chapter 2, then the entire Gospel is a preparation for the Passion. That from the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he's headed to the cross. And then he speaks about how the temple would be destroyed and in three days raised up. In this case, Jesus is talking about the temple of his body, that it would be destroyed and he would rise from the dead, and the people do not understand. They think he's talking about the physical temple. So in these three readings, we've had three different interpretations of what temple means. The body of Jesus, the Christian body, the mystical body of Christ, and the temple in Jerusalem. All of them are places where we encounter the Lord. And may God bless us. Thank you.